The city council in the socialist city of Edmonton, Alberta, has voted to defund the police by about $11 million. Prediction? In 2021, after slumping police morale and an explosion of violent crime, Edmonton's socialist mayor will be looking for a scapegoat instead of looking in a mirror to find out who's responsible for the mess he created. The bandwagon jumpers on Edmonton City Council have voted to get on board with Black Lives Matter and have recently voted to defund their police budget by $11 million. Look at this from the CBC. Edmonton City Council voted Monday to begin the process of re-evaluating the future of policing and community safety in the city. Council approved a multi-pronged motion that directs the city and the police commission to study several aspects of the system and advocate for changes to the Alberta Police Act. The motion came in response to demands for major changes to policing after thousands demonstrated against systemic racism and police aggression in June. Hang on now. Those were protesters in June who were protesting about an in-custody police death that happened in the United States, thousands of kilometers away. And yet the Edmonton City Council was happy to find their own city police guilty of police brutality, apropos of nothing. It's ridiculous and I have no idea how the frontline police in Edmonton have any morale left at this point. Anyway, let's go on and read about the new mob rule at the City Council in Edmonton. Council held public hearings last month where it heard from about 150 people that's in a city of greater than a million, who expressed a range of concerns about policing, some of whom called for defunding the police. In wrapping up the marathon debate, Mayor Don Iveson said he was grateful for the discussion over the last few weeks. I'm not grateful for all of the history that is before us on a global scale and all of the hurt and pain that is within it, he said, right here in our community and around the world, as a result of colonization, slavery, exploitation, and oppression. Honestly, if you think that way about the city you lead, you should not be leading the city. You shouldn't think your city is an awful place, and you shouldn't be governing by yes and and us too, without evidence to support these policies. This is government by guilt and shame, not empirical data and proof. Let's go on though. The motion includes cutting $11 million from an estimated $389 million budget in 2021 and redirecting savings to supporting community development, human services, and housing. This far left wing extremist move by the city council in the capital city of one of Canada's most conservative provinces is one step more extreme than what's happening in Toronto, if you can believe it. I know, it's hard to believe, but it is absolutely true. The City Council in Toronto resisted pressure to defund the police there. A rare smart move by that council, considering the ever-exploding crime rate out there in the centre of the known universe. I mean, who in their right mind would defund the police in the middle of these numbers here as compiled in a report by the left-wing Toronto Foundation. Just look at this on page 109. After decades of decreases in severe crimes, overall crime has risen for four straight years, though most severe crimes are still far below their highs of decades past. Murder and attempted murder were at historic highs last year, far higher than past decades. And on page 110, The number of murders and attempted murders in the Toronto CMA in 2018 was truly unprecedented with a 53% increase over 2017 and a 37% increase in attempted murders. No other year in the past 20 years had more than 112 murders, while 2018 had 142. This is while the rest of the country saw a decline of 4% in the homicide rate. So it would seem Toronto City Council thankfully looked at the evidence and crime rates before them and said, yeah, more cops are the answer here, not fewer. But Edmonton, not so much. Edmonton City Council may not have looked at their crime rates before they opted to have fewer cops on patrol on the streets to keep minority neighborhoods safer. But I took a quick look at the stats. Look at this from Stats Canada. The total crime rate in Edmonton in 2018 per 100,000 people 
9904.4. By comparison, Canada's crime rate for the same year per 100,000 people, 5488.36. Now, Alberta's overall crime rate per 100,000 people is 8607. Point two one. Now that's a consequence of the social degradation caused by our bad economy fomented by NDP and liberal policies, attacks and failures. Now to summarize, Edmonton's crime rate per 100,000 people was nearly double the national average in 2018. The last real data available and the last real data available to Edmonton City Council before they made this decision. And yet, the City Council just cut the police budget because the mob had emotions about cops. Good luck to you, Edmonton residents. You're going to need it. Now, here's how I think this is going to go down. Edmonton has cut the police because they were convinced by uninformed university Marxist protesters that all cops are bad. This will leave fewer resources for poor and minority neighborhoods. The crime rate will explode. Police morale will plummet. Cops will quit. Fewer cops are out there doing an even more dangerous job. And Edmonton begins the slow march to becoming Chicago, north of the 49. And the mayor and council of Edmonton, well, I bet they will follow the lead of John Tory out in Toronto, who ended the police intelligence practice of carding at the behest of activists and then oversaw that unprecedented increase in crime I told you about earlier. Tory blamed lawful gun owners all across the country for gang problems in his city and called on Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to punish us all. And Trudeau obliged, happy to have any excuse to take our guns. Again, not evidence-based policy, but rather mob rule by feelings. And Iveson in Edmonton will likely do the same. When Edmonton's crime rate inevitably continues to mushroom, it won't be his fault. It will be our fault. For Rebel News... I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. At Rebel News, it's our job to hold the government and all levels of government to account on behalf of the people. And that's one of the reasons why Justin Trudeau doesn't want us in his daily press conferences. He'd rather have the mainstream media who do the dirty work of holding the people to account on behalf of Justin Trudeau. But we're fighting back. We've launched a legal challenge. You can see that story and support our fight against Justin Trudeau for press freedom at letusreport.com.